No story of the Kawasaki Z1 can be told without first mentioning the Honda CB750. The Z1 was born in its shadow. Kawasaki was working on their own 750cc bike at the time, and they had their fingers hovering over the button to release it. But by a whisker, Honda beat them to it. The CB750 was a serious project for Honda. They actually withdrew from the World Grand Prix Road Racing Series just to concentrate on it. Sales in the States were dropping and they needed a big bike to lure customers away from the likes of Harley-Davidson, Norton and Triumph. The result was powered by a transverse, single overhead camshaft inline four-cylinder engine, with an all-new five-speed transmission and four carburetors. It had 68 horsepower, 44 foot-pounds of torque and a top speed of over 120 miles an hour. The term superbike was coined to describe it, and considering how much bigger and more sophisticated it was than anything else at the time, it was nothing short of revolutionary, especially for Kawasaki, since the CB750 was bad news and good news, because they decided to up the stakes and take the challenge to Honda, with 900cc to beat Honda 750. Z1 was the most powerful Japanese four-cylinder four-stroke at the time. It had 82 brake horsepower, twin overhead camshafts, and a top speed of over 130 miles an hour. It was also rigorously developed, clocking up thousands of development miles in the US as project codename New York Stake. And Kawasaki's lightly disguised development mule gives an idea of how seriously they took the battle with Honda. There's no doubt that the Z1 was more than the Honda. It had more power, more speed, more performance, and more in the looks department as well. But while the Z1 had more than adequate grunt, it became known for less than adequate handling. Both the frame and the forks could have been beefed up to cope better with the power. bikes couldn't be more different in character. The Honda looks comparatively approachable, unthreatening even, and the Z1 looks like it's ready to launch you into next week. But it's not all about the looks. Both bikes were remarkably smooth on the road and just as happy cruising along effortlessly at low revs. Their handling might not inspire that much confidence and they both tend to wallow in changing direction and sweeping corners while the frame flexes squirm underneath you. But the Z1 feels big not just behind the handlebars, but also in terms of its sheer presence on the road. Honda may have provided the more harmonious balance and the better all-round package, but if we're talking about drama, it's hard not to see how the Z1 stole the CB750's thunder. The 
Z1 may have been born in the shadow of the Honda, and the CB750 still has a cult following today, but for pure excitement and presence, the Z1 left the CB750 in its mirrors.